well, well, first of all, welcome to this workshop, which is a heart to heart workshop. And I wanted to start off with a prayer and I wanted to start off praying this way because I'm a little nervous and this type of prayer also just helps me to, I don't know, remember that God is like here with us. So it also, if you listen to the words that we're going to pray, um, it's the reason why you would have a holy hour to begin with. So if you want to just start um, with me and pray with me, pray, please pray for me, um, that this time just be totally for the Lord um, and to give him honor and glory. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> to be with you. I want to be with you, Lord. Um, Lord God, we just want to offer this time, um, these next, uh, this next session, these next moment, moments with um, everybody that's on the screen all across the nation, um, our SFC brothers and sisters, our family here on the virtual, and um, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to be with us, to open up our hearts, to hear what you desire us to hear so that our hearts might be transformed. And we ask the Holy Spirit to come to the heart of Mary because it's through our Blessed Mother who teaches us how to really draw close to her son's heart and our guardian angels, because just, you know how we roll. So guardian angel, please help us uh, to just focus. And um, all the saints that were so awesome this week uh, are coming up. So John Paul II, Blessed Carlo Kudis, St. Margaret Mary, St. Teresa of Alba, um, please pray for us. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you guys um, for like being there with me. I was kind of really nervous, but um, it's such a joy, it's such an honor to be with you here. Um, thank you uh, for allowing me to be present with you. And I just really wanted to say, first off, if I go crazy and I go off tangent, it's because I really love this subject of adoration and holy hour. So um, I was asked to share what you would do in holy hour or why to make this holy hour. I think it's because, um, shout out to SSC Hawaii, when I was serving with Patrick and Tina in Hawaii, um, I dropped everything and the SFC Hawaii people took turns actually driving me to mass and adoration. And it's, it's because for me, um, I really just wanted to be, be with God, be with the Lord where I knew and believed with all my heart that he was there. So when people asked, you know, what do you do? You know, like why, well, why did you do a holy hour? Because it's awesome and Jesus is there. Well, what do you do when you're struggling with your holy hour? Um, and for me, I just, it's a kind of maybe non-conventional way of answering it, but my answer is just to remember who you're going to visit and who you're going to be with. And how do you do that? Um, is you put yourself in his presence, specifically in the Eucharist. And the Eucharist is just this amazing thing because it really is Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. That's what we believe in as our, in our Catholic faith. And especially during COVID, it's amazing how the Lord loves us so much um, that he would make it in a way for us to be with him also spiritually. So my, again, my answer is if you're having a hard time for holy hour or how can I make a holy hour, I'm struggling with it. My answer is very simple. It's just go to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament either at a church or if not spiritually. And it took me until this talk to realize it. Um, I was in formation with the Carmelite sisters for three years. And anytime we started a holy hour or meditation time, we would start the prayer off with the spiritual communion prayer. And I thought, oh, that's cool. But I realize now what they're doing is they're actually putting themselves in the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, putting themselves in this posture of like, I'm gonna adore you in the Eucharist, which is, your very heart, which is the gift that you gave us. So let's just go over really quick the Eucharist and how awesome it is. Um, 
So if the tech team can put up this PowerPoint, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our Christian life. You want to know how to be fully alive? You want to be holy? Like, this is it. And I love John Paul II. He said, you know, the secret of my day is the Eucharist. It gives me strength and meaning to all of my activities, to everything that I do. And it's just so amazing to me that this man who spoke like 10 languages, traveled all over the world, um, really drew thousands of people to talk to him. He was so charismatic. He was so like fully alive that he said, my secret is the Eucharist. That is what gives me life. That is what gives me purpose. That is how I'm able to love the way I can love. So if we come before our holy hour or before our time of prayer, before our adoration time, it's, I know that this is it. This is where the source of everything is. It's here. It's where Jesus is. And the Eucharist is also his very heart. Now, it's pretty amazing um, scientifically. I'm like a science major. Um, but shout out to Blessed Carlo Kudis, who uh, was beatified last weekend. Um, he did a whole website of Eucharistic miracles because he was just so convinced if people knew about these miracles, like they would believe. And so I'm just really excited, really quick. I just going to give like a two minute like spiel of the Eucharistic miracle of Lanciano. I think it's in Italy. Um, the priest was celebrating mass and the priest himself didn't believe that Jesus was truly present. And as he was consecrating the host, the bread and the wine actually became flesh and blood. And this was in the 8th century. You can go to Lanciano right now and still see those particles of fresh and blood. Now, as a scientist, I'm just like, hold on, that's like 12 centuries ago. Like, how is the body and blood still like even intact? So that in itself is a miracle. But then um, I guess in the, I can't remember, like the 19th century or something, some of the scientists actually analyzed um, the tissue from this beautiful miracle, or I guess this relic of Jesus. And what they found was that the tissue was not only human tissue, but it was cardio, uh, myocardium, which is heart tissue. And that heart tissue what had a uh, blood type that was AB, which is the same blood type that's found on the Shroud of Turin. The Shroud of Turin is the garment that covered and buried Jesus. So for me, when I found that, I was like, no way, that's awesome. Like, this is Jesus. Like, he loves us so much that he wanted to have proof, tangible proof, scientific proof that this is it. This is me. Like, this is my very heart and I'm giving it to you. And that's just amazing, like how God loves us so much. So the Eucharist is the source and summit of our Christian life. The Eucharist is his very heart. And the Eucharist is a sacrament of love. It's this gift of love. When I was praying through this workshop, I was like, Lord, I could talk about adoration like all day. Like, what do you want me to tell them? What do you want to share? What do you want them to hear? And he kept telling me over and over. He's like, I just want them to know how much I love them. And God loves us so much. I mean, he created the whole universe for us just so that, you know, we can experience it and be like, "Woo, cool universe. This is pretty dope. Um, he created the universe. He sent Jesus, his only son to hang out with us and then die for us and then rise from the dead and open up the gates of heaven for us. And not only did he do that, he said, Jesus didn't want to leave us by ourselves. And he did send the Holy Spirit. But one of the greatest gifts that he gave us was John Paul II writes about this. He said, I love them so much. I mean, sorry, John Paul II says, Jesus loved us so much that when he left, you know, when we, we leave, we give someone a picture of us or a memento or something so that we can remember, um, we can remember that person who's leaving. Jesus is like, I'm not going to give you a picture. I'm not going to give you like a symbol. I'm not going to even give you just like a piece of something. I mean, he did do all those things actually, but he's like, I'm going to give you my very self. And it's the sacrament of love. And it, it boggles my mind. So again, I'm going back to how can you make your holy hour like awesome and pass that barrier of like, it's really hard for me to pray. Can you come in front of the Eucharist, put yourself in front of the Eucharist or, you know, drive yourself to a church and that might not be open, but you know that Jesus is in there and say, Jesus, I know you're in there in that tabernacle. You're the same Jesus who 
was born in Bethlehem. You're the same Jesus that became friends with fishermen and prostitutes and tax collectors. You're the same Jesus who healed lepers. You can heal me. Like you're the same Jesus who like saw someone with a broken heart and went to them and cared for them. You're the same Jesus who said, I love you so much. I'm going to suffer incredible amount of torture, die for you. And then by just this amazing power that I have within me, rise from the dead, bring you in a way, open up the gates of heaven and bring you to heaven so you could be with me forever. Like my goodness, the sacrament of love is the Eucharist. Like imagine if we put ourselves every holy hour in that mindset of like, Lord, you're here. You've given me your heart. You've given me not just a symbol of your love for me. You gave me your very presence. You are truly here, body, blood, soul, and divinity. I think like, how can you not have a holy hour that is going to be transforming? So it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Um, so the Eucharist is a source and summit. It's his very heart. It's a sacrament of love. And the Eucharist is the favorite way JP2 and all the saints love to pray. Um, just a little aside here. Um, if you do have like a hard time, you know, just coming before the Holy Hour, um, my secret crew is Mary and my guardian angel and the Holy Spirit. It's really fun. Um, someone was interviewing JP2 and they said, you know, Pope, like, how would you answer this question? Like, how does the Pope pray? And JP2 was like, um, well, you're going to have to ask the Holy Spirit for that one. Because JP2 prayed because he he asked the Holy Spirit to teach him how to pray. He moved with the Holy Spirit. And so most of the time, I'll probably say the Holy Spirit will like lead you to Jesus who is truly present here on earth with us. And you ask the Holy Spirit to come. And man, like you, you start there. You're set. Like, that's the secret to sanctity. Like, all the Holy Spirit to just come and move you and, like, uh, guide you through your life to be holy. But also, Mary, who is the first tabernacle who carried Jesus in her womb, she would know how to make a pretty good holy hour. So I usually ask our Blessed Mother, Mama Mary, like, come, you know, be with me, help me to focus. And she's so awesome. Like, if I get distracted during holy hour, she just, I hear her gently just, like, come back, you know, here's Jesus, or come back, like, in Jesus in my heart, making that spiritual communion, knowing that he's within me. He's like, just come back here to this place that is the source of peace, is the source of joy, is the source of your strength. And my guard angel, he's pretty cool. We're, we're, we're homies. <laughs> um, but he'll also help me and guide me, um, protect me during that time of prayer so that I can experience God's love and joy and peace. So... That's the Eucharist, and I think it is kind of this unconventional way of answering, hey, I'm struggling with my holy hour, what do I do? I challenge you, you know, go, go visit Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, he's waiting for you. And of course, during COVID, we can't, like, put yourself, like, imagine yourself being there in front of the Blessed Sacrament, or bust out, like, the live virtual adoration things that happen. Or, you know, the saints say that when you receive communion, um, Jesus remains with you there until your next communion. So you can make that spiritual communion, like ask the Lord to um, come into your heart once more. And you can just be aware, like the Lord is here with me. Like I am a tabernacle for his heart. Like the tabernacle of my soul is like where he desires, he longs to be here and dwell in my heart. So yeah, man, those are, those are like, I, go, I don't know, the answer to like having a holy hour, is, I feel like it's really simple to me. Um, so let's talk about the heart to heart holy hour, but I call it heart to heart holy hour. Um, it's a little different than the spiritual exercises. Um, and I kind of want to share um, from what I've experienced in my own journey of life, especially during COVID, it's been pretty hard. Like I used to like be able to drop everything, make a holy hour make to mass, but it's hard, man. Like I'm stuck in this square space and I don't really see people that often. So my body is just usually very tired and drained. And the Lord is so merciful and good. He's actually taught me like whatever you can give, if it's out of a pure heart, if it's this time that you can give me, then I love that. So when I do talk about holy hour, I do also want to give people like just that 
like freedom and that cushion to just be like, Lord, I desire to make a holy hour, but maybe you're calling me to make a 30 minute meditation or 30 minute prayer time with you because that's all I can give physically. Um, or maybe it's 15 minutes at the end of the day, at the night. Um, I just want to encourage you to know that like God is so merciful and he, he will give you the grace to make that time of prayer as he desires you. Um, because one of my spiritual directors told me like, it's, it's according to your state of life. So I know there's like moms who are running around with like three kids and they're trying to feed the kids and do all these things and do the virtual whatever. And sometimes all they can give is 15 minutes, but that in itself, if it's a 15 minutes of a heart to heart with the Lord, that's just perfect. That's really what the Lord desires. So sorry, talking about the heart to heart holy hour. I just wanted to talk about holy hour being like, it's, it's holy, meaning it's a set, it's a, a, a time set apart for God. So if that's 15, 30, an hour, great. And as you do it often and consistently, like you don't even count the time. It's like when you hang out with a friend, you're like, hey, let's hang out for 30 minutes. Like, no, like, hey, let's just hang out and just be together. And that's how Jesus wants you to come to him. Like, let's just hang out. Let's just, can you just, can you just be with me? Like, I just want to hear how your day is. And when you give that to him, if it's 30 minutes, like it could be 30 powerful minutes. If it's an hour, if it's an hour and a half, like, oh my goodness, like John Paul II had prayer marathons. He would pray for six hours. Why? Because he was just like, um, I'm immersed in God's love right now. So I'm going to be here for six hours. Like that's pretty crazy. So I guess what I'm saying is when you do this heart to heart holy hour, like just Throw all those rules back. I know it's kind of crazy saying that, but just throw all those rules back. And what I really want you to focus on is like, I am just going to be with somebody that I love, which is God. And he loves me more infinitely than I can even imagine. So let me just take that time to allow my heart to be filled by his love. So really quick pointers on this heart to heart holy hour. It's a pure gift. You just ask the Lord to be with you and that's it. Like, you can't do anything you can't like concoct like the best like scripture meditation or whatever it's all a gift like that's the beauty of prayer it's the gift of his presence it's the gift of him being present with you and it's also very personal so when people ask me like hey can you talk about holy hour workshop i'm like okay there's to me there's no formula to be honest um I'm going to give some pointers, but it's so personal. Like every time I make a holy hour, every time I visit the Lord, it's so different every time. Like I'll come to him angry and like frustrated. I had a really long day because I was in front of my computer for eight hours and I'm just groggy. And he's like, great, hang out, come, come be with me. But it's very personal. That holy hour can be different for every single person. And that holy hour can be different for you every single time. Um, whatever time of adoration, whatever time of prayer that like heart to heart, it's just, it's just as new as if you were talking to some friend that you were going to see, it's always different, you know? Um, and that's the beautiful thing about our Lord. Like he's so personal, like the way he talks to me is probably different than the way he talked to John Paul II or St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. He talks to me as Julian, like he talks to my heart uniquely the way I can really understand And I just think God, our God is amazing because I'm pretty sure there's like billions of people on earth right now. And if they just took some quiet time to like listen, because you have to listen in the silence because God speaks. Mother Teresa says, right, God speaks in the silence of the heart. He would speak a billion different ways, specifically to the heart of each person. Man, God is so, God is so amazing. His love is like, like mind blowing. So Here's here's the holy hour, um, I guess, tips or pointers. The only pre the only prerequisite to having a beautiful time with our Lord is a desire to be with him. Like I want to be with you. And when you desire that and you come before him real, like I don't want like I'm going to try to be really holy, Julian, or I'm going to like put on like like, you know, my I don't know that he just wants you real authentic, like whatever you are, however your heart is joyful, sorrowful, broken, ecstatic, distracted because I have so much energy. Like he just loves you. He just wants you to come and then humble, meaning God is God and I am not God. I need God. 
So I'm going to come real and humble. Like I need you Lord. And I'm going to come because you're a real divine person. I, I need you. So once you come, of course, you start with the sign of your faith and you make an act of faith. Like, I believe that you're here, Lord. I'm going to come into your presence and you sign yourself with the, with the sign of our faith and the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And this is like my vision of a holy hour, which I'm sure some of you guys have experienced. Um, it's here I am, Lord. And I just come. I just come as I am. So I, I, when I make a holy hour, I just start on the side of the cross. I kneel before the Lord, whether it's virtually or in person, outdoors or something. And I just like, Lord, I'm here. What's up? And usually I hear him respond, how are you? How, how, how is your heart? And that's, that's such a beautiful thing for me to hear the Lord asking, like, how is your heart? And that's where the heart to heart conversation begins. Then I start pouring out my heart to the Lord. Lord, I'm tired. Lord, I am going through this. Lord, I am so stoked because I was able to finish a project today. So you just say, here I am. And then after you pour out your heart to him. Oh, sorry. So tell, that's the second part. Tell him what's on your heart. So here I am. Tell, tell him what's on your heart. Next slide, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Tell him what's on your heart. Um, after you've poured out your heart to him, the psalm says, pour out your heart to the Lord. He is your refuge. Um, you can just rest in his heart. Next slide, guys. Um, and I love that image of St. John the Beloved resting on the heart of Jesus. This is actually my favorite part of any adoration time with the Lord. Sometimes I actually just skip to this part and I just go and I say, here I am, Lord. And then I just, I just rest in his heart because, you know, we live in a really crazy world and our hearts are human and vulnerable and they get broken and tired and drained. And oftentimes, like, I literally just go to adoration. I'm like, I need to just spend time with Jesus because he's just going to fill me up and he's going to make me holy. Um... I, um, okay, so after you rest in his heart, um, how do you know your adoration time is coming to a close? You feel grounded, you feel filled with his peace and his love and his joy. And it's like watching a sunset. You watch that sunset and you kind of just like, hmm, this is good. And then you like know when to go. Like maybe the sunset sunset it already <laughs> but like you kind of just know when to go and before you go obviously when you, it's like as if you're hanging out with a friend and a homie's like hey man thanks for hanging out I just say Lord thank you for being with me but then the crazy thing was awesome with our Lord is I say Lord stay with me and and I encourage all of you guys to pray like that in your holy hour like don't just leave the lord like linger like you know when you hang out with a really good friend and you're in the parking lot and then you hang out and you're lingering and you kind of go to your cars and you got to come back and then you kind of linger around that's like kind of what i do in holy hour i'm like i kind of just want to stay here lord um but you can invite him to come with you to carry him in your heart to invite him into your heart to be with you always and so once you leave his actual true presence like it's it just blows my mind because he spiritually comes and even spiritually he's like the same jesus who like was born in bethlehem who walked in who walked on water in the sea of galilee who like rose people from the dead and here he is like in my heart it's just crazy to me that he can come spiritually as real as he does sacramentally so that's like pretty much the gist of like a heart to heart like holy hour so how does this work in COVID time? I mean, I kind of shared it. Um, I really prayed about this piece. And what I prayed about is in COVID, um, I think it's just really important for us to ask, Lord, what are you teaching us? Um, I think what the Lord's teaching us is he wants us to kind of experience the burning, the yearning, the hurting for him. He's allowing us to struggle and to also keep us humble because the truth is we really need God. And I think during this time of COVID, I, I kind of challenge and encourage all of you guys, like, don't just let that pain, like, eh, you know, like feel the pain and that desire of like longing to be inside a church again, like longing to be in a church with other people again, in that community of faith, in that community of saints. Um, 
I think that's what the Lord is allowing us to experience during COVID. And when that desire is so real and so strong and so like on fire, it like draws him to our hearts. So allow that desire to like burn within you and like yearn within within you so that he can just come and like make as many spiritual communion. Like people are like, oh, spiritual communion for the day. This is I went to math. I'll like make more spiritual communion. It's like, just keep going. Like my, I know a person who's like, I made a spiritual communion five seconds later. I'll make another spiritual communion because I need Jesus. And then like 10 minutes later, it's like, I'm kind of crazy right now. I need another spiritual communion. So I guess what I'm saying is like spiritual communions are awesome. So feel free to make as many spiritual communions as you can. Um, and then uh, I guess I just have one story I, sh- I would like to share because it relates to, well, two stories. Well, one story, because I think we need to time wise. Okay. One story is um, I... I was having a really hard time and my boss who happens to be a sister um, texted me and said, I'm going to live stream adoration for you. And when she live streamed adoration for me, um, she told me, even though it's through a screen, just know and believe that Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, who you love so dearly, is just as present to you as if you were there. And when I opened up that screen, Um, and I prayed with the Lord and it was only a 15 minute adoration time. Oh my goodness. This peace just came over me. This peace just washed over me and everything that I felt that was so oppressive, so depressing, so like heartbreaking, like it just, it just washed away and God's peace and his love for me just took over. And I just felt his mercy and he, I felt like him carrying me. So the reason why I share that story is because we are going to go into a holy hour um in a couple of minutes but i just wanted to share that with you um as we move forward i can talk about this more so like if you want to like call me up hit up like patrick tina or derms or whatever and just be like you know i want to talk to jules about this <laughs> can i get her email because i it's just a really short amount of time for me to share so um i wish i could share more but i'll just kind of recap here um the recap is It's a personal holy hour. It's a heart to heart with the Lord. And if you unite yourself with the Eucharist, him being the source, him being really truly Jesus, the same Jesus who has power to conquer sin and death, who has power to conquer all of evil. And if you understand that when you put yourself sacramentally or spiritually in his presence of the Eucharist, you encounter his very heart. And when you encounter his heart and your heart, is like going to his heart, like how can you not be transformed? Like I really believe with all my heart, this is how the saints prayed. Um, And this is how they became holy because it was only when they gave and poured out their hearts to the Lord and they allowed his heart to enter into their heart and become one, it's amazing. Sorry, that's what communion is. Like you're in communion with the Lord, designed to be with him in in one. it's just amazing because when you spend time with Jesus, just like you spend time with any friend, you become more like that person. So the more you spend time in adoration, the more you spend time before him, even if it's a short visit to the last sacrament, like a, a drive by, like know that that exposure to his heart makes you more like him. So like, all I know is that if you want to be holy, if you want to be fully alive, like this is it. Like, John Paul II has written an encyclical about it. He had a synod on the Eucharist. Every saint that I know of is like, it's the Eucharist, it's the mass, it's his presence here. Like he's truly here. If you wanna be more like him, if you wanna be holy, like make your holy hour either sacramentally before the Lord who's truly present in the Eucharist in the blessed sacrament or put yourself spiritually before him or make that spiritual communion and have that holy hour in that, beautiful temple of your heart and that's really what contemplation is so i kind of feel like if you want to take that next step of prayer you you are worshiping this is living out worship this is coming before his temple his presence in the temple and just dwelling in his presence abiding in him so yeah like that's what's up um we're gonna lead you into a reflection and I really just, it's a simple reflection um, for this workshop. It's just pick one thing.
that really resonates with you, that you feel like the Lord is wanting you, calling you to work on. And just ask Him for that grace. And whatever that grace is, know that it says over and over in Scripture, like, you know, knock and the door will be opened to you. Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. Like, ask big. God is a great big God. Like, ask big. Like, He can give you these big graces. You want to pray like JP too? Ask Him, you know? But really, pray pray like you. Like, He just wants you to pray like you your own heart to his heart. So what what can you ask him for? Lord, I ask for the grace to have a deeper desire for you, to be more real in prayer, to have a more consistent adoration time, more consistent holy hour, to learn how to wait in silence because I'm so fidgety and I have so much stuff going running through my mind. Or maybe it's to just know you deeper in the scriptures or really to understand you deeper in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist because I just don't get it. Ask him, ask him, Lord, I want to be drawn to you. I want my heart to be on fire with you. And I want to receive your very heart into my heart so that we can be one, so that I can be transformed, so that my heart can be more and more and more like you, which is meek and humble. So during this time of reflection, ask that for that desire. And I really pray and hope that um, he speaks to you during this time of reflection. So we'll just ask the Holy Spirit to come, teach us how to pray. And um, if he moves you to write that prayer down, asking the Lord for the grace, write it down, makes it more real. And um, yeah. Enjoy this time of just reflecting on me, how the Lord is calling you to love Him more deeply. I 
So this next part is just kind of the, I feel like the climax of um, this session. It's actually going into an adoration time with our Lord. And I think what's just so beautiful is um, we're going to be united, not just in worship, but we're going to be united in the Eucharist. And I just ask you to uh, allow the Lord and just uh, allow the Lord to enter into your, your, your space, your place, your heart. Know that because of his awesome love for you, his mercy, his, his presence, his love just transcends time and space. Like he just goes beyond that screen that you see. And it's just amazing that <laughs> it's kind of cool, actually. I don't think I've ever come to a conference where we're united like across time zones and worshiping like the Lord in the Eucharist. So um, I just invite you to, to, to be there with him. And I, I just really, I know I might be going a little bit over here, but I just want to share with you a really quick meditation. Um, in our holy hour, we're going to have the divine mercy. Um, allow him to just uh, pour out his mercy into your heart. And then Father AJ is going to give a little bit of a reflection. But during that quiet time, um, do that heart-to-heart -heart holy hour that we kind of shared here in the workshop. But at the end of that holy hour, um, I'll just share with you a meditation that I invite you to do. Um, it's at the end of my holy hour, and it's what the Holy Spirit taught me. It happens differently every time, but I imagine the Lord just coming really close to me, sitting next to me or sitting before me, and he asks me very gently to hold out my heart. And my heart is here in my hands. And he takes my heart and he places it into his heart. And then in turn, at least for me, the Jesus that prays with me, he, he kind of has this like mischievous like face and he's like, I have the best gift for you, the most precious gift for you. And he asks me to hold out my hands and he gives me his very heart and he invites me to put that heart into my heart and just become one. So it's just a small little meditation, but I don't know. I invite you to go there with him um, and just know that we are united in the Eucharist. So we'll be going now into adoration and I might not sure when I'm going to see you guys next, but <laughs> I do know that like when you put someone into the Eucharist, like you're putting it into Jesus presence. So like, you're all one, we're all one guys. It's awesome. <laughs> um, so I guess what I'm saying is I'm not going to say you see you later or see you whenever I'm going to say, I'll, I'll see you in the Eucharist because every time I go to the Eucharist, you're going to be there. So may God bless you. And we're praying for you always. Um, let's go to adoration. Thanks be to God. Jules gave an amazing workshop and a beautiful reflection song. As she mentioned, we're going to be doing a virtual adoration in the next coming minutes. So this is just a reminder to prepare a space in which you could be with God for the next hour in prayer. Close any extra tabs you have in the background, put your phone down, and just sit. Take this time of prayer to be with God and to allow him to enter into your lives. Make time for God as he wants to be with you. As a reflection song mentioned, take this time to be with God, to be real with him, and have a great time in, in prayer. I'm praying for your holy hours. May they go, go great along with the rest of this conference. God bless.
chaplet of the divine mercy you expired jesus but the source of life gushed forth to the souls and the ocean of mercy opened up to the whole world O font of life unfontable divine mercy envelop the whole world and empty yourself upon, upon us O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of jesus as a fount of mercy for us i trust in you O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of jesus as a fount of mercy for us i trust in you O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy, mercy on, on us and on the whole world. world. 
Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. wanted to speak a little bit on icons. I don't want to give a homily for tomorrow, but if you have gone to Mass tonight or if you're going to go to Mass tomorrow, you're going to hear Jesus speak to the Pharisees, and Jesus is going to look at a coin, and he's going to look at this coin, and he's going to see an icon of an individual, and Jesus is going to ask the question, whose image is this? I think it's a question for each one of us. You know, whose image are you? Whose image are you? If we go back to the book of Genesis, something jo Pope uh, Saint John Paul II spoke so much of, he spoke of um, Genesis, this moment when mankind was created, when man and woman were created, and they were created with this existential loneliness. These are the words of John, Saint John Paul II. And so I just wanted to, to read to you uh, a little bit, a little excerpt from an article on the creating of a, an icon. I don't know if you've ever seen an icon. Have you ever seen an icon? An icon is, is this orthodox art, which isn't really a painting. It's kind of a, a work of art. It's, it's done on wood. And I just wanted to, to read to you about some of the work that goes into creating an icon, because that's going to help us come back to this question of whose image are you? So these religious icons, if you ever get the chance to see a religious an icon, an orthodox icon, I really recommend it. Even, I think, if you Googled it, you'd get a really great uh, impression of it. But you don't paint an icon. You pray an icon. An icon is a form of prayer. When you look at an icon, it's meant to put you in the presence of God. When you see a beautiful icon. You're looking at um, a holy individual with your own eyes, and this brings me into something sacred. Icons, they've often been called the windows to heaven or doorways to the sacred. When you're standing in front of an icon, it's like you're looking through a window into a heavenly world of mystery. But what's great about this window is that it's a two-way window. So I'm standing there, or you're standing there looking at the icon, but as you look through this window, you are being looked at by the eyes 
of this holy person in the icon. It's like you become a part of the mystery that the icon is trying to express. And so what's very beautiful is it's, it's, it's created on wood, right? And this wood is a reminder of the Garden of Eden, what it was like before the fall of Adam and Eve. It symbolizes both the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. And then what happens? So they put this linen cloth over the wood to protect it and then remind us of the cloth that Jesus was wrapped in when he died. And so this is kind of symbolizes the soul and the life of the person. And so the, the iconographer, the person who's creating this icon, he cleans or she cleans and smooths and prepares this, this cloth that's put on the wood. And then what happens as well is there's kind of this mixture of clay and, um, and then you kind of breathe on the clay and you put gold onto the clay. And this breathing onto this icon, it like kind of vaporizes and it symbolizes the spirit in this moment when you were created, when I was created. Back in the, in the book of Genesis, God breathed life into clay and from clay comes forth you and I. So there's this beautiful reminder of the act of creation, the breath of life. And then of course, gold symbolizes divine light and heaven. You can see all the, the work that goes into creating just one of these icons. And I think what's so beautiful about, about that is, is, is if it takes this much work to create this icon, think of all the work that God put, has put into you, has put into me already. You know, in, in the book of Genesis, we just hear so quickly, God breathes life into clay. And yet here you are, I don't know how old you are, I'm pretty old. I, I had to sit down a little while ago because I was getting old. But God has put so much work into me and you. God is like the ultimate iconographer, creating you and I, giving us life, breathing life into us, putting a gold into our lives giving us uh, so many blessings. Think of all your, your struggles, your difficulties, all the times that you've needed God and God has been there. Maybe all the times that you didn't feel God, but you made an act of faith anyways. We have all these, this past, all of these moments that were continually kind of being created by God throughout our lives. It's so, so beautiful if you go back to what Pope St. John Paul II, when he speaks about this existential loneliness of man and woman, that when we're created, we're created with this need both for each other and this need for him. And what's so beautiful is that perhaps at the beginning, when, it, when the man, man and woman were created in the garden, we, they didn't have this direct access to God that you and I have, this direct access through what we're doing tonight, through adoring God present, Jesus present before us, certainly this act of faith that we make that God is present before us. So I invite as we go into this, this time of a, um, of a reflective song and then time of silence to really put yourself in the presence of God, to put yourself as a piece of art in the hands of the artist, the great artist, to, to allow God to work on your soul as only God can, in the quiet, in the light of his reflection. Amen.
You are the one thing. You are the one thing that I need. You are the one thing. You are the one thing that I need.
Antum ergo sacramentum, venerem urcernui, et ante cum documentum, novo You have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed, blessed be Jesus, Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart, blessed be his most precious blood, blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar, blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy, blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. 